Why does anything exist at all? Ugh. You've kind know. of taken that as a starting point. Yeah. It exists. I think that's the hardest question. Isn't it just hard questions stack on top of each other? It is. Wouldn't it be the same kind of question of what is life? It is the same. I, well, that's, that's sort of like I try to fold all of the questions into that question because I think that one's really hard. And I think the nature of existence is really hard. You think actually like answering what is life will help us understand existence? Maybe maybe there's it's, – it's turtles all the way down. It'll, it'll just under, – understanding the nature of turtles will help us kind of march down even if we don't have the experimental methodology of reaching before the Big Bang. Right. So – well, I think there's there's sort of two questions embedded here. I think the one that we can answer by answering life is why certain things exist and others don't. Um, but I think the sort of ultimate question, the sort of like prime mover question of why anything exists, we will not be able to answer. What's outside the universe? Oh, there's nothing outside the universe. So I, I have a very, um, I am a very like, I am like the most physicalist that like anyone could be. So like for me, everything exists in our universe. And it, it and it, like I like to like think it like everything exists here. So even when we talk about the multiverse, I don't like to me it's not like there's all these other universes outside of our universe that exist. The multiverse is a concept that exists in human minds here and it allows us to have some counterfactual reasoning to reason about our own cosmology and therefore it's causal in our biosphere to understanding the reality that we live in and building better theories. But I don't think that the multiverse is something like, and, and also math, like I don't think there's a platonic world that mathematical things live in. I think mathematical things are here on this planet. Like, I don't think it makes sense to talk about things that out, act, exist outside of the universe. If you're talking about them, you're already talking about something that exists inside the universe and is part of the universe and is part of like what the universe is building. It, it all originates here. It all exists here in some I mean, what else way. would there be? There could be things you can't possibly understand outside of all of this that right, we call but, the universe. Right, but, but, and you can say that, and that's an interesting philosophy, but again, this is sort of like pushing on the boundaries of like the way that we understand things. I think it's more constructive to say the fact that I can talk about those things is telling me something about the structure of where I actually live and where I exist. Just because it's more constructive doesn't mean it's true. Well, it may not be true. It may be something that allows me to build better theories I can test yes. to try to understand something objective. And in the end, that's a good way to get to the truth. Exactly. Even if you realize so I can't do you were wrong in the past. Yeah. So there's no such thing as experimental Platonism. But if you think math is an object that emerged in our biosphere, you can start experimenting with that idea. And that to me is really interesting. Like to think about well, people, I mean, mathematicians do think about math sometimes as an experimental science, but to think about math itself as a, a, a object for study by physicists rather than a tool physicists use to describe reality, it becomes the part of reality they're trying to describe to me as a deeply interesting inversion.